Hello and welcome to User Spotlights. I'm Laura with ClickFunnels, and today I'm speaking with Maria and Fumigo. These women are the co-founders of Face Yoga Method, a proven combination of breath, mindset, and face yoga poses to revolutionize the way women treat the aging process. They're also sisters-in-law. So cool. Recognized as best in the industry, Fumiko has certified over 780 students in her, in her method and successfully built her female-led brand around the world. Additionally, she has published six books, two eBooks, a skincare line, a blog, and multiple online face yoga programs to help people embrace their natural beauty and aging. Welcome, ladies. Thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks, thanks so much for, for having us. Super excited. excited to learn more about your business and what you two do together and how you came into business. So can you tell me a little bit about your background and how you ended up starting business together? Sure. Yeah. I, I, do you want me to go? Yeah. So okay. Fumiko and I were sisters-in-law. So we met um, almost 20 years ago. And when we first met, I'm very entrepreneurial. So I, I heard what she was doing in Japan. And I was like, we got to bring this to, to the United States, to the world online. And at the time, she wasn't quite ready um, because she wanted to start a family. And so we circled back a couple of years later. And I, at that point, had just started, you know, this was in like 2010, 11. Yeah. And so, and I had been consulting in online marketing for a couple of years. And so I had a completely different perspective of how we could do the business. Um, because I saw what was possible with online learning. So at that point, she was ready, and we we started. We literally started with an ebook and a zero email list, zero YouTube channel, everything. Fumiko, you want to say from your perspective? Sure. Yeah. So I started my uh, face yoga journey almost 19 years ago. I was in the mid 30s, and I was living in Japan and teaching at the uh, one of the oldest women's universities. I just love teaching women, you know, even from then. And then I got in a car accident, and that made my body and the face out of alignment. And I started seeing tremendous like asymmetry in my face and the body, and I hated it. But also mid 30s, you know, I started seeing a sign of premature aging, and I had to do something. So first thing, of course, I went to get the creams and I get facials. I never done any procedures, but that's how I started. And then one day I realized that, you know, face is a muscle, just like a body. So why not tone my face so that I can really exercise my face muscles and fit my face? Because I've been doing body exercise for a long time. I started actually practicing yoga when I was 10 years old. So I know how exercise, you know, responds to my feeling of like feeling good and looking better. So that's how I started. And all of a sudden, really caught the attention from social media. Um, not social media, but then a media attention in Japan. So nobody was doing, there was no word like a face yoga. It didn't exist. And I started getting lots of media you know, requests. I did lots of TV shows and I wrote magazine articles and books and life was really good, but it just got to the point that it was just too busy. I had no personal life because everything was just work, work, work. So I left my job at the peak of my career and the people thought I was crazy because I was leaving all the, you know, fancy stuff going in Japan. And I came and I married to Maria's brother. And when Maria started telling me about the possibility of expanding in US, I said, no, at first, because I just didn't want to recreate the busy lifestyle like I was doing in Japan. But when she talked about online, I thought like, oh, that is so nice and cool because I can work from anywhere in the world. So that was something like I thought we can do it. But like Maria said, there was nothing, nobody, there's no word face yoga existed online. And we started from zero and we even created our website together, sitting next to each other, pick up the color, <laughs> pick up the font. And yeah, yeah, that was over 10 years ago. So cool. I love the business idea. And I feel like it's it's still probably something so new to other women like me who aren't familiar with face yoga. Mm -hmm. I've been doing yoga for a while. I've always loved it, but learning about it and seeing your website and um, kind of going in depth with some of the things you can do to start and how it really can make a difference, I found so cool. So I'm, I have all kinds of questions about the business, but um, let's start with going into online funnels. Like what led you to creating an online funnel um, to grow your business? Um, well, I we were a couple years into the business 
And I heard, and we were just making stuff up as we went. I mean, I had heard, you know, I would follow people online, thought leaders, so to speak, and online marketing. Um, and then we got to the point where I was like, okay, I need to be more involved. I need more in-person help. And I heard this, gosh, I can't remember how many years ago this was, but it was, I think it was maybe the second um, click uh, funnel hacking live. Mm-hmm. It was in Dallas, I think. And I think that was the second one. I'm not sure. And so I heard about it and it's so funny to think of it. It was so small then compared to how it is yeah. now. So I told Fumiko, come with me to this event. And um, Fumiko, you came to the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah. So we went to the event and that seriously shifted everything for me. Mm-hmm. And we got the techniques and the strategies, but what shifted most for me personally was when they had people speak on stage, there was one person in particular that had talked about taking their business from here to here to like multi six figures to multi seven figures, like within a year. And I, I like hadn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't even know that was possible. It seems so weird to think about that now because it's happened. Um, but I didn't know it was possible. And just to see somebody else that you're just like, oh, that person's just like me, you know, and they did this, that like shifted something in my head that we can do this. And so within a year, we were back at ClickFunnels and we had turned it into a multi seven figure business because of that. And so we used funnels, obviously, during that year, you know, we used the software and created, you know, kept, we had someone, an IT person that tests out all these different funnels for us, different ways of selling. Well, I think Maria too. Yeah. And that was eye opening what is possible and seeing person, you know, of course I read so many books and heard like, yeah, this is possible, but seeing the person on stage and talking about that. And then I think next year, the person like made it bigger. I go, wow, what is that possible? It's possible. And then energy, you know, click final live. I love the energy too. And even we even took our team members um before pandemic, you know, to the quick final lives. And everybody got just so motivated to make it happen. And that's something I really enjoyed. Yeah. I feel like I've talked to a few people that have had very um similar stories where they had already started a business or they had great business ideas, but being around other leaders in the industry and really shifting their mindset to having that belief in themselves is what changed everything for them within that year. So it's really cool that that kind of energy and the belief system and the belief that you had in yourself and your business really started to uh, change things for you. So you, I know that uh, we talked about how you have books and eBooks um, and you had the eBook for the business. So was your first funnel for lead generation or did you have something that you used as a lead magnet to sell a, a high ticket offer how did how did you go about creating different funnels to see success in your business well when we first started it was just to build a list it wasn't even a funnel it was just to build a list and then it was to sell an ebook and then we found out about funnels and so that's when i then you know we got somebody to help us make them and she was so into it she was just like oh my gosh i can create this so quickly i can create this one and this one and this one so she and at that point we had started creating different programs. We created a membership site. And so we let her kind of have, you know, we focused on creating content and running the business and we let her like kind of go to town with creating these different funnels. And so she got really, really good at it. And she tried various different funnels and would just, she was very much like a numbers person. And she would just look at the numbers saying, okay, this funnel's working here. I'm, I'm running this much traffic to it. Here's the conversion rates or here's the traffic. And we just went from there and, you know, and then we would learn, you know, we, I think our most popular funnel at the time was the aging habits funnel when quizzes were so big, uh, which they still can be, but this one like ran so well for us for multiple years where people would take a quiz to find out what habit they were doing to age themselves and then get a custom result at the end of the quiz that this is the product that you should be using. That was a superstar for us. Yeah, I can imagine a quiz being really success- successful in this industry where people are wanting to learn more about their own health and wellness and how this applies to their skin and the things that they can do. Because I was interested just kind of going down a rabbit hole of like, wow, these are things that I can do without skincare 
and exercises I can do to actually reverse the aging. And I think that that's just like a huge, there's so much there for other women like me in their mid thirties that are interested in finding other techniques or other ways to reverse the aging process in, you know, a very holistic way. I think that's really cool. Right. And also so you look on the exercise. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, it wasn't exercise. It was like, you know, aging habit, like unconscious aging habit. Like if you're talking on a phone, always tilting your head, that create asymmetry in your face, right? Oh, yeah. You have to really be aware and then combine with exercise. And then at the end of the quiz, we kind of provide it like here. These are the exercises you can do. But you have to be aware of the habits because you, even you do all the exercises, if you don't break these bad habits, you can't really get the great result you're looking for. So I think many people are like shocked to find out what they are doing without even thinking about it. Yeah. Or even creating the wrinkles on the forehead and tilting ahead, sleeping on the side and the little things. And yeah. Yeah, that's very eye-opening. I feel like I'm already trying to bring some awareness to my son. <laughs> oh, I love that. So uh, tell me a little bit about your background, Fumiko, and how um, being in Japan and teaching other women led you to your passion for doing this in your business today. Okay, yeah. So when I was teaching, well, I started teaching at the high school, girls' high school, and then I just wanted to really help them to think bigger than the box because Japanese society, which is, you know, I love Japan, got born and raised in Japan, but everything was just such a structure, beautiful structure. But I noticed that there's such a limitation as a woman. I was told, you know, I should just get married and have a child and then don't go to college. She's okay, but not go graduate school. But I really wanted to find, you know, what I really want to do. So after I graduated university, I went to um, graduate school in Canada and United States. And I wanted to do something with my, you know, experience and help women to really see things differently. So high school was still limited in terms of what I could teach because I still have to teach them curriculum. And then I decided to teach at the university, which I love it so much. I saw such a shift, my students' mindset, but then still like something was missing because they're still young. And then they haven't really had the experience in terms of, you know, life experience. And then I was thinking about it. What can I do? What can I do? And then I got in a car accident. So I just shift my career from teaching at university to teaching face yoga. And people thought I was crazy because I had a really good job. And uh, even a good friend of mine, one of my friends asked me if I lost my pride. Like, you're teaching that? And leaving that great job, I said, yeah, because I can't really do it. But the biggest thing is, you know, having Maria with me in the business, that really helped me because I'm creating all the contents. I have a big picture, what I can help women, but I need actual, you know, um, input, actual brain in order to make it running as a business. Because you can't just teach, you know, people for free and you can't just do all the TV shows, but you need something. And then... The background, me, I have a cultural anthropology, so I was always, always aware the cultural differences and different belief system and also different language use make your muscle move differently. So when I speak English, you know, I don't speak English perfectly because my muscles are not trained to speak English. But when I look at these differences and when I, when we started this business online, we attracted so many international women maybe because we are international company, but also maybe because my background, I'm not a native English speaker. So it's such a, I would say there's no waste in life. Everything I've done, we've done, really created this business. And that's what I, that's what I say. And I love it. Oh, that's beautiful and inspiring. I love that you've worked with so many women throughout your career. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what it's like working together. Cause it seems like you, Fumiko, are kind of like the character of the business. You, Maria, are, uh, the, you know, the business savvy, doing everything to to make the business successful. And together, you probably have just this perfect synergy. What is it like working together? It's great. I mean, I, I it's funny because I feel sometimes like we're the anomaly. You know how you hear all these warnings like, don't go into business with family or with your friends. Because And I've heard, you know, the stories, but it's been over 10 years now. And I don't think we've ever had 
I don't know, any big discourse over the business because Humiko is so powerful in what she does and her discipline and face yoga. And we trust each other implicitly. So she stays um, creating. It lets her stay in her creative space. She doesn't even think about She's learned so much. It's amazing because when we first started, she was like, I don't even understand how I'm supposed to teach this online. Like, that's not going to work. And I was like, no, just trust me. And now she knows. I mean, she's like an online marketer, like nobody's business. It's it's so funny. The question she asked just from being in it 10 years. But we've got a whole staff now of about, um, I think we've got 10 to 12 working for us all around the world. So I manage the whole business side and work with them on making those decisions and the marketing and all that kind of stuff, the accounting, da, 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 da. And Kumiko doesn't have to worry about any of that, which is really nice because, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, we wear so many different hats. It's hard. And I, I look at like other people that I know that are going into business and I see them as the star of their business, but then they also have to do all the other technical stuff, the marketing, you know, the accounting, managing the staff, HR, and I just think, wow, like that's a lot. It is a lot. So our synergy together, we're really, really fortunate and that it's so complementary between the two of us in our skill sets. I second too, but also I think we have a similar vision. You know, we really believe the uh, uh, mindset and the neuroscience and I'm very nerd. Like I can really go into like deep that too. So we have a different, you know, skill set, but also same vision i think that helps us a lot yeah well i i can yeah. imagine the impact that has being able to take some of those things off of her plate and vice versa and the same thing we at click funnels you know we all work together as a team to make sure that we're handling so much so that russell can stay in his native genius and he's staying in his wheelhouse as you know an attractive character and people have so much to learn from him and his presence and being on stage and coaching and teaching things that it's like everything else needs to be handled by the rest of the team because everyone has their strengths and it's really cool to see all of that come together for sure so i would love to know from both of you like what are your what's your biggest piece of advice for somebody who's maybe just getting started out as an entrepreneur or maybe they're in the health and wellness industry and they're like i want to start a business but i want it to be online what should i do i would say get started as quickly as possible because your mind will always stop you know the perfectionist mind comes in or the bright shiny object stay focused on one thing and get started as quickly as possible and monetize it right away that is a mistake i've made a lot of other things monetize it right away don't worry you know if nobody buys it that's okay at least you've started like that and it will grow love it for me is just be yourself you know, don't try to be somebody else. That's the hardest lesson I have to tell myself because I was scared. Like Maria said that at first, like, oh, I don't want to put myself. I've been teaching for so long, so I don't have any confidence. I mean, I have no problem teaching in front of people. I've done big events, but teaching in English and putting myself online, like I was really scared. But I just have to push myself out of my comfort zone so that, you know, I can just be myself, be goofy or whatever I want to just be so that I attract the people who get attracted to my energy field instead of trying to convince other people. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that is the hardest lesson. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. That's such a testament to the bravery that you've had in this business and how you've overcome that and worked together and grown a business that's successful. And it's really inspiring to see. And I, I really appreciate you both sharing your stories with us today. So can you tell us last thing um, where people can learn more about you and your business online? Yeah, faceyogamethod.com or we're on faceyogamethod at Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. Well, well yeah. Instagram has the bulk of everything. Yeah, perfect. I personally look forward to checking it out and learning a little bit more and maybe I'll be in touch because I'm so fascinated by all the things that you're teaching and, and what you've done with your business. So again, thank you so much for joining me today and um, letting all of our viewers learn more about your business. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one.